Hi guys, bit late this week. Normally this is a Friday or Saturday morning type video. This is Sunday night in Sydney. Just been very, very busy. But here is how to make a likeable character. This was prompted by someone who left a comment and uh, sorry, I didn't write your name down, so I'll put it up here. Thank you for the comment. First, we've got to understand why we want this character to be likable. If it's just along that standard old, you know, no one will like a dislikable character, that's wrong. There's heaps of dislikable characters. I've recently watched Ripley on Netflix um, with Andrew Scott, an amazing Tom Ripley. He murders people, he assumes their identity, he takes money off a grieving family. He does things that everyone would go, that would be a really unlikable character, but you still, you know, Andrew Scott pulls a lot of weight there, but you still end up liking him as a person, as the character Ripley, who's very, very good. Walter White, people watched that thing for eight years. Sure, Walter wasn't likable, but he was compelling. So if you had to make Walter likable, he would have ended up with something like Weeds, which didn't really work for me, but Walter, being a despicable human being, you would still watch him. So you don't have to make someone likable just for the sake of making them likable. So if you need them to be likable, you've got to make that decision, right? So everything you do in writing has to be done deliberately for a choice that you make based on a choice that a character will make. It's not enough that you say, oh, well, over here in this, this thing here, it says that they have to be likable. I'm going to make him likable. No, make him dislikable but compelling. You want people to turn the page and say it's going to be happening with this character next time. And when they make a movie, to keep watching, not to go away on a streamer or to get up and walk out of a cinema. We have to make sure we know why we're making them likable, but they've got to be compelling. <clears throat> we'll just assume likable. Okay. Let's look at some definitions of likable. I've got them printed out here. I'll put them up on the screen. Likeability can be defined as having a nice, pleasant, agreeable personality. It is associated with being, I'm oh, sorry, with being cooperative, friendly, and, and socially acceptable by others. Likeable people tend to endear themselves to others and make friends. That's one version. So we'll apply that in a minute. The other one, which I think is probably better for a writing point of view, because it's a slightly more technical understanding of likeable. Both ag agnetic, confident, and uh, communal warmth behaviours lead to greater likability. When meeting strangers, communal behaviour causes people, causes others to want to know this person better. Being non verbally pleasant, displaying positive as affect, and good body language, good body language strategies for increasing likable liking of strangers. Wow, I murdered that, didn't I? <clears throat> so that's an easier way of doing it. We could make a character likable. Now, we can make that character likable to the audience, or we can make them likable to other characters. That's the other thing we've got to consider. So let's look at some traits we can bring out in characters to make them likable. I, I spoke about Ripley before, the, the Tom Ripley story with Andrew Scott. We made him a character of pity to start with while he was still doing bad things. He was, both his parents died, he was brought up by an auntie that didn't like him. She basically, it's implied that he was like better off out of the house and f fending for himself. He's doing small time frauds, petty crime, trying to be in the social calendar a little bit, but failing, living in a horrible room, poor, very, very poor. And we pity him a bit. We can see he's not doing the greatest thing in the world, but we still pity him. Then he gets his opportunity to make some real money, to go to Italy, find out what Dickie's doing. And he goes there. At first, he's just going to turn up, pretend to be Dickie's friend, convince him to go home. But as soon as he turns up, he sees there's a scam and he starts doing horrible things. He becomes Tom Ripley, the horrible character. But we, we like him. We relate to him because we see where he came from and we see that he didn't have the means to come to where he wants to be, to where he needs to be, where he thinks he needs to be. So his goal, we understand his, he wants something in life and that draws upon our empathy. This is when you want to make characters relatable. People have to look at them and go, yeah, I work extra hours to get a bit more money so I can get ahead, so I can get the life I want. 
or you know, my kids are going to college and they're working really hard and I see that because I want to get where they want. Or I know someone like that who's just had a really rough life and now they're starting to get ahead. You can relate, you can empathize with this person. So we made Tom Ripley likable by giving him a bad start in life, which made us relate to his struggle. And even though he wasn't doing the good thing, we can relate, we can see why he was doing the bad thing. It wasn't that he's a bad person, he was just put in bad situations and this is how he's getting himself out of them. We nearly pity him for his bad choices. That's one way of doing it. Make him a victim. We can also have people have a desire, um, something that we want them to achieve. If we see the movie The World's Fastest Indian, Anthony Hopkins' character, Bert, uh, is trying to be the fastest, I think it's an under 650cc single cylinder the bike in the world. He's not a great guy, he's a little bit of a grumpy old man. He, he, he lives in this little house, he's, he, you know, he's a friend of the neighbor's kid, but he's just a grumpy old guy. There's not a lot of people like him around town, but he goes there, becomes a hero. When he comes back, everyone's like, oh, Bert, we love you. But we wanted him to achieve that because we saw his struggle and we wanted him to achieve that goal. The goal was set up very early on, that this is what he was going to do. He was not likely to get it. He was an old man when he went there. He came from a small town in New Zealand. He had to go all the way to the Bonneville Salt Flats in America. He was trying to raise money. We hooked onto his goal and we liked him because we understood the goal and we wanted him to achieve it. We could have made him less likable. When he got there, we understood his gruff exterior and and a few people got on his side and then we began to like him more through the journey of that story. But it's because we hooked onto his goal. The other thing that can make someone likable, we've gone through these things, make them genuine, make them likable, make them tell the truth. Here's some other things. I'll put these ones up. Likable people are genuine. They ask thoughtful questions. They don't pass judgment. They don't seek attention. They are consistent, they use positive body language, they leave a strong first impression, they greet people by name. So there's a quick checklist of some things you can get your character to do to make them likable to other characters, even if the audience is a bit shady on them. We can sort of say, well, other people like them. And we're a herd animal human beings. So if everyone in the story likes this character, we'll begin to question ourselves while questioning them like, oh, I don't think they should like them. Why do they like them? You know, there's no reason for them to get along. It's a little bit like the end of Walking Dead. No one would have really forgiven Negan. He was such a bastard through the series. At the end, people were like, oh, well, we forgive him because now he's... You know, it would have been a lot harder for people to forgive Negan and move forward. But they did it. And as people began to like, the other characters began to like Negan, the audience began to like Negan. We began to understand his journey, what he was trying to achieve. And that's the other thing too. We saw what he was trying to achieve. He was bringing about law and order under the fist for the first few seasons that we saw him. But towards the end, he wanted to sort of try to back off, try to make more autonomous towns. Babies were being born. He had a plan for the future. And we could see that Rick had sort of undermined that in some way. So they managed to start to get the audience around after having Negan just beat people to death to begin to like his journey so much so that he got his own spin-off series and that he became a bit of a victim and we were really on his side. A big transformation. Just watch a few of The Walking Deads and see the, the Negan arc for that. The other thing we can do is competency. If a person is really competent at something, we enjoy watching them do it, and it becomes exciting to, to, for us and to us. That we want him to succeed, to have a goal, but we really like people that are competent. Even though he's a bit of an idiot and a bit of, we don't like that character, but he's doing a heist, and we want to see him you know, crack that safe and get in. We want to see him pull off the big cyber crime. We want to see the bank robbery go really well. We want to see him get away. Tom Ripley again, M murder, murderer, uh, con man, thief. We want to see him get away at the end. We're happy to see people that are very competent at what they do. We want them rewarded for their competency and we will like them for that reason. Serial killers. Uh, there's lots of murder mysteries where they don't get the bad guy and the bad guy's on the run. We don't hate the bad guy. We're cheering for the good guy, but we don't hate the bad guy. He's sort of like a little bit of a 
what do they call it, an, an enigma. We don't know what to do with our hatred because we don't hate him. He's just doing these things. He's just getting away with stuff. That's how we make things likable. Talking about likable, if you do one of these, you tell the algorithm that you like writing and they will show you more of this stuff. More stuff from my channel, but more stuff about screenwriting as a whole. Watch the behavior panel as well. They're really good at explaining human behaviors like likability and things that people do. If people are nervous, which I'm not here, but people sort of like you know, bounce off, burn off energy, that sort of stuff. They explain all this sort of stuff in the behavior panel. It's worth a watch. If you'd like to buy the book, the book isn't so much like do this on page two. It gives you tools like likability and how to explain things and, and how to think, think things through in your mind so you understand people better. That's, that's the book. Tools, not rules. It is a series of tools that you can use because you're a good screenwriter anyway. We know that. But sometimes you'll get stuck. You'll go, oh, I don't really understand this person's motivation. What can I do to understand a character better? What can I do to understand a world? What can I do to understand the relationship between the protagonist and the antagonist? That's that book. T-shirts, which I don't have. I was about to say this, like this, not this one. Um, they're just a bit of fun. The all the money from that goes to the person who designed it. And if you want a discount on Write a duet, which is what I use. I don't get any money from that either. And if they ever have a program where they do, I've instructed them to send all the money to a children's charity. That's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching this this far. It's a, a good thing for me. It's a reward for me. And it's, I hope it's helped you. Uh, thank you for everyone who's been doing this. It's been fantastic. And until next time, guys, keep writing. Bye.